to those who know, those who have been in this game for a while, citizen watches have always been a diver's choice. We could even say that they are the diver's choice. As much as we like to think that brands like Rolex, Omega, Seiko and others are prominent, they sure are, you always tend to find that the divers, those who've spent more of their lives underwater than on land, will always have a citizen watch tucked away somewhere. And I've wanted to talk about citizen watches for a very long time. This ProMaster Mechanical 200M is a great segue into talking about this brand. But let's just bear in mind that the watches that Citizen does offer us, the sheer variety of pieces that they have, this one is by no means original or unique compared to them. I would even go so far to say that Citizen offers some of the most dynamic and out there pieces in the dive watch category compared to virtually every other watch brand in the world. And nine times out of 10, when you look at or pick up a Citizen Diver, it's from a completely different world, another planet. We could say that a lot of these designs aren't even of this earth. Now look, at first glance, we could say that this model, this ProMaster looks like any other dive watch and you'd be right. There's not really much about it that says it's unique and when we compare it to the rest of Citizen's Diver lineup, this model is probably the most generic of the bunch. But the reason why I'm giving this piece the coverage is it has a really nice story, a great story that's worth sharing, that's worth embellishing and talking more about, as well as the fact that this piece does have a sense of daily utility. It looks like a fun everyday wearer. And on the wrist today, Seiko Prospects SPB143. It's quite relevant to this topic that we're talking about. And I'm about to do a review on this piece, a further coverage about the Prospects collection, about the design of this watch, what makes for a great everyday Seiko. A lot of us fall in love with a narrative. It's what gives a watch more of a heartbeat. It can be the seal of approval, the definitive reason for its existence. We enjoy hearing how the accomplishment was in part because of the instruments that were used and that they may have played a small part in the success of the mission, the journey, the adventure. Now the story of this citizen diver, it's not record breaking, not groundbreaking, it doesn't have a narrative at all. This watch is also known as the flying diver, put that in quotations, because it was used by the Pakistani Air Force for many years. These pilots would be flying F-16s and would rock these divers through the 70s and the 80s. Now why would a certified dive watch be used as a pilot watch? Who cares? It tells the time, it's affordable, cheap, you can read it from a distance. That's all that really mattered, right? And a similar story could be said about the Yema Superman and how it was used by the French Air Force for a long time. And like a slew of so many other dive watches bought at this time, they were affordable, accessible, it did what it said on the tin. And that's all that mattered. There is nothing special about this watch, it needs to be re-emphasized again. I don't believe that there was much advertising around this watch back then, I mean, we can see that it's not a model that is aiming to be anything groundbreaking in any area. So in 1983, a man by the name of Neil Blakers was taking a Saturday stroll on Long Reef Beach, which is in Sydney, Australia, where he saw this mass in the surf. He saw that it was a watch face, but it was covered with all sorts of sea life and barnacles. So he took it home and he used lemon juice on the face to clear it up, and it was still able to self-wind and tick. He saw that it said Citizen on the dial, so he took it to Citizen Watch Australia, which was then sent out to Tokyo, and the experts were able to take it apart and have a good look, and basically came back with a story to say that this watch has been submerged in the ocean for between three to five years. It was also a Mark I, or a very early generation of the Citizen Diver. Now nothing is known about how it ended up in the Pacific Ocean, if it was lost overboard, if it slipped off a diver's wrist, now more likely than anything else, since it was on a nylon strap, it was found on a nylon strap, it probably came off a surfer's wrist and ended up in the reef. It spent years being thrown around and became a host for life and eventually was washed up on the shore. Now let's be honest, this is not an amazing story. This is not the best story about heroes and villains and conquering mountaintops, but it's humble. The humbleness of a watch that managed to surpass requirements and specifications even in the process of nature claiming it, it was still able to survive. Now let's just bear in mind that this is salt water we're talking about, this is the ocean. Extremely corrosive, I mean mechanical things don't last in this environment very long. So this was the inspiration behind the recreation of this great little diver. The ProMaster Mechanical Diver 200M NB6021. I hope I got that reference right. And the specifications, I mean, pretty basic. It's 41 millimeters in diameter, 12 millimeters thick. It uses super titanium, which is something we'll get into, with a hardening surface treatment. It has a sapphire crystal, a gloss dial, an automatic 9051 caliber, which is a Miyoto-based movement. It has hand winding, it's anti-magnetic, it's got an accuracy of plus 10, minus 10, the usual specifications of most of these calibers, and all of this for a very reasonable price. 
Now, since this is a newly released model, it'll probably mean that it's the most pricey of the bunch. But bear in mind again that this is just a taste of what Citizen does offer. And they have so many other models in their back catalogs that are well worth looking at that are half the price of this watch. Let's get into talking about the design of this watch now properly. Like I said, it's simple. It's nothing groundbreaking. This watch is not even remotely unique. But the question is, is that a bad thing? Do these types of daily wearing watches need to do things differently or can they execute all the usual design traits flawlessly and as a result end up much better? Now maybe this is something we can get into and debate in the comments. We can see very clearly that it has traits belonging to late 60s skin divers with a very strong Seiko 62 MAS inspiration, a very typical choice of using Mercedes hands on the dial. But when we look closer at the details and the scale of everything, you take this watch in as a whole. It's incredibly competent. It's actually better than that. Citizen has managed to hit the sweet spot with this diver. No nonsense, straight to the point. But with such great care put into the typeface placement, the sizing and the scale, the framing of the date window, a small loom plot at the three position. It's all these minuscule things that make such a difference when looking at a piece like this at a micro level. Now, yes, first appearances, nothing too special. But it's the focus on those other elements that holds your attention. And that's what's really hooked me about this watch. The story, the idea that it's a piece that you know, is inspired by a model that survived in an environment that it's inhospitable for mechanical items. You look at what they've done to reinterpret this piece. Look, it's nothing surprising. It's nothing truly special. But as far as a daily beach going holiday watch, it looks fantastic. And isn't that not in the role of a daily driver? A watch that does not attract attention, that doesn't necessarily scream for anyone else's attention. It just does what it does, puts its head down and keeps on working. Other things that have stood out to me about this watch compared to some of its competitors, SPB 143, for example, this is a full titanium watch, case, bracelet, depending on the options you choose. Now for the price you're looking at, it's unheard of. And believe it or not, Citizen was one of, if not the first brand to introduce a full titanium watch to the market. I think this was in the 1980s. I think what they're able to do with a watch like this is bring a little bit more external attention onto the design of this piece with a great narrative, but at the same time holds true and uses little things like their proprietary titanium and an obvious understanding about the placement of typeface and where it should be. There is nothing I would want to change about the dial of this watch, the size of the plots, the fact that they're all applied, the automatic text used underneath the Citizen logo. It's just the way it should be. If anything, I would want to see the bezel fully graduated like the original. I also enjoy the fact that they didn't add any loom to the underside of the Mercedes hand and they kept it skeletonized. That does give off this feeling that the loom might have fallen out of the hand back in the day, since this is like a reissue inspired model. At the same time, it also gives the hour hand less of a presence, a more floating presence, not something that takes up all of your attention like on most dials. So in closing, an example of a watch like this shows us that you don't have to be original to create something great. You don't have to be unique. You don't have to do anything groundbreaking. More importantly than anything else, you offer something that's wearable for most people that works as a great daily wearing piece, but also uses these materials like titanium, which for a dive watch, superior. It's absolutely fantastic. All the while having a strong focus on the design language and keeping it looking relevant. Am I saying that you should go mad for this watch? No. I hope that this brought a bit more attention to the brand and to show you just a small taste of what they offer. Safe to say that Citizen truly is the diver's dive watch. And there are so many good reasons why. This piece is obviously filling a niche. It's not for the professionals. It's not a watch that by any means is reinventing the wheel, but it does have a great presence and narrative that will help push it forward. A man by the name of Neil Blakers, who was taking a walk on Long Reach Beef. <laughs> Long Reach Beef. <laughs> Long Reef Beach. Long Reach Beef. <laughs> In 1983, a man by the name of Neil Blakers was taking a watch. <laughs> <clears throat>